Hey there guys and gals, it's me Rex, and welcome back to another Intermediate C++ programming tutorial. Uh, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about inheritance and its concept and you know the awesomeness that is inheritance. Now, unfortunately a lot of people disagree with what I have to say. You know, they say inheritance is bad, inheritance is a no-go and you should always you should always use um, component component model application rather than uh, you know inheritance or hierarchical models which is absolutely garbage all right I mean I'm sorry if I'm offending you but you should be offended because I mean come on uh, if, if this concept was bad um, they wouldn't have invented it all right if something is terrible they, they would probably not make it and if it was super bad they would not continue they would actually discontinue discontinue and deprecate it like like tens of thousands of things that have been deprecated in this in this field of uh, study for example printf now we all know and love the C printf method but it's totally deprecated because it's unsafe so yeah believe me if this was a bad design they would have deprecated it already. Now, I'm sorry I had to rant, but uh, yeah, let's go, let's get right into it. So, what the hell is inheritance? Now, imagine if you have a couple of classes. Look at this, these guys right here. So, I have a square, a circle, and a diamond class. Alright, so I have a couple of classes here, three classes, and they all have uh, four methods get perimeter, set perimeter, get area, set area, and they have two floats, perimeter and area. Alright, so they have all of these guys have this thing alright now this is a very bad design uh, in my idea okay if you show me some code that looks like this I'm gonna just look at it and say dude are you goddamn serious with me what the hell is this what what is this design right, now sometimes you have to but sometimes you know you don't have to you, this is a bad design alright uh, so yeah if you show me some code that's like this I'm gonna just look at you with a uh, you know, with a poker face and I said dude are you serious alright so why is this code bad? There's a saying that says if you're doing something more than once, you're probably doing it wrong. All right, and I totally agree with this thing. If you're doing something more than once, you're probably doing something wrong, right? Um, and these two somethings are are totally different, right? Uh, so here's the thing: these are redundancies in our code, all right? So get perimeter and set perimeter, they're all everywhere. Now, what if I had a way to make this happen without having to rewrite it every single time I was creating a class like this? Alright, so what inheritance allows us to do it is that it allows us to put everything in its separate category. Alright, now, um, riddle me this. What do these shapes or these classes have in common? Well, it's kind of obvious. They're all goddamn shapes, all right? Square, circle, diamond. I mean, we gotta we learned this when we were like kids, right? Like two, three years old. We used to do stuff and learn this, these shapes. So yeah, these are goddamn shapes. Um, all right. So square, circle, and diamond. Now, what if I had a way to make this all go away and create a simple class that already had all of these in place? All right, I could make my code super good. I mean, well, it doesn't make it faster. It doesn't make it any better for the compiler. It just makes it better for us humans. And that's the only reason we have inheritance. Because it makes the code easier for us humans to understand. All right, so let's go ahead and make a class right now. Sorry for that. Let's go ahead and make a class right now and try to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and make a class, call it shape. Open and close that. And I'm going to get all of this guy, all of these dudes, right there I'm gonna rename this to this guy right here alright so we have a shape and it has a get perimeter and set perimeter all good and dandy right alright so I have a shape class which already has all this good stuff in there alright now I want to move all this into all the classes that uh, identify as shapes alright so the only thing I have to do the syntax is quite easy quite simple all you have to do is put one of these guys here, public, I'm sorry, or rather a modifier who will be public, protected, or private. I will talk about that soon. This is the most usual case. So public and the name of the class that you want to inherit from. All right, so now square is now a child of shape. Now I can take all of this away 
and it already has all of those. Let's go ahead and test it super quick. So I'm going to go ahead and make a shape class. Uh, shape S, yes, seems good. S dot, I have these four uh, methods right here. All right, so shape has those methods as we expected. Now let's go ahead and test the square, see if square has them as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and rename this shape to square. So I'm going to change the type S dot, and as you can see, it already has all of those uh, methods that we want. All right, so I just made them once, now I can use them as many times as I want. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just do the same to these guys as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and remove these. And as you can see, it's it made our code simpler and smaller and easier to understand. So what the hell is square? Square is shape. All right, what the hell is shape? Shape is this class. All right, so you can easily create a hierarchical um, kind of a structure for your design and then, you know, you could just... Anybody who's trying to read your code, they're going to understand it easier, right? But here's the thing. Overdoing this can lead to problem, right? You should know the balance, right? You shouldn't go too far with this or too little. You should use it just enough, right? So if you, like, create, you know, like, uh, primitive shape, you know, whatever, 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 like 10 levels deep, and then you reach square, it's just bad design, all right? You don't need to go 10 levels deep. Two, three levels is enough. Honestly, it's enough. Two, three four in the worst case scenario or I right, don't go super deep all right unless like your classes have like tens of thousands of lines of code in them then you separate them and that's it you can just use components if your classes have thousands of codes thousands of lines of code um, there will be a course about refactoring that will be coming soon I will tell you all about this stuff pretty soon in another video I mean another course series of course so yeah, this is the basic thing about inheritance, all right? Now, we all know how to do this, but what the hell is this public? What if I made it private? Because I could. What if I made it protected? Because again, I could, all right? So what is this? Well, when you put public here, it means that the highest access modifier that is going to be inherited is going to be public. What that means is that if something is public, it will remain public. If something is protected, it will remain protected. If something is private, it will remain private. If I was to change this to protected, which I will explain in a second what it is, if something is public, it will turn into protected. If something is protected, it will turn into protected. It will just remain the same. And if something is private, it will turn into private. It won't change. And there is the last one, which I'm pretty sure you already know what it does. If something is public, it will turn into private. If something is protected, it will be private. If something is private, it will remain private. But that doesn't change what already exists here. Okay, so when you're trying to include shape, you just bring everything from shape with this modifier. It doesn't affect this guy right here. But as I already said, public is the, uh, public is the most common one that we always use, you know, almost always we use public. Okay, so that's all good and dandy, but um, what is the deal with this guy? What is the deal with this dude? What's protected? Now, protected is something between private and public, and uh, if, you, if you see my end standards guide, it's a standard thing, if you read that, it actually says uh, that, you know, I actually say that you should always put the public, then protected, then private, because it's goddamn obvious if somebody's trying to read your code, they're not going to look at what they can't access. They're going to look at what they can access. All right? They don't give a damn about that. They give a damn about this. So, unlike in C Sharp or Java or whatever, or the way you code, you got to do it like this. This is, the, this is the standard that is the most logical. This makes the most sense to me, at least. Anyhow, so what the hell is protected? Now, we already know what public and private is, so protected basically means that anything from outside of the class can't access what comes in here. So if I make something like int foo, foo can't be accessed from here. So if I do square s, s.foo, I can't have access to it. If I do shape s1 and do s1.foo, I can't have access to it. Protected basically means you don't have access to it outside of the class. Now, obviously, you have access to it from the within of the class, you know, the inside, the interior, because it's obvious, you know, you have access to everything inside of the class, even private members. And here's the thing. 
you can't have access to private members directly within their child's of the class. All right, so if I do something like, um, I hate that, all right, I love this. So if I do something like perimeter, I can't have access to it. I don't have access to this perimeter guy right here. I have access to these dudes, but I don't have access to this guy, all right, because it's private. What protected means is that you don't have access to it from outside of the class, but you can have access to it from the inherited class. Okay, so I can access Foo if I want to. I can access Foo because it's protected. Now, we usually put everything under protect. Not, not everything, but we usually put stuff under protected when we're inheriting. Um, so that we can also have direct access, but I really, um, I really don't recommend this. You know, everything should be private. Data should be private. But if you want, you could put some special functions or members methods in here in the protected section, so everybody could use that. All right. So this was the difference between public protected and private, and you know the public protected and private inheritance modifiers. All right. Let me just check my notes. Okay, so we talked about public, protected, private, the syntax, the hierarchical structure, and I gave you some examples right here, easy peasy. Now, there's one more thing that remains, the constructors. Now, this is a very important subject. You should already be familiar with this guy right here, the member initializer, the one we called before the uh, in, in the constructor, so I can just say, you know, perimeter is zero, you know, something like that. Why are you giving me this? Oh, yeah, yeah, this guy right here. All right, so um, this is the member initializer. I had a whole video on it. If you don't know what it is, go watch that. But, uh, yeah, so how do we do constructors? All right, so let's say I have a class, shape, and it takes two float values, float P and float A, area and perimeter. So we do perimeter, perimeter, P, and we do area, A. So we put... P into perimeter and A into area, all right? Quick, quick um, and simple, yeah, I mean, quite easy. All right, but why is it giving me an error here? It says that no default constructor exists for class shape. All right, there seems to be an issue there. So what it needs us to do is it, is it needs us to call this constructor, all right? So whenever I'm trying to create a shape right here, if I do shape S, I'm gonna have an error. Well, let me just take that guy out. See, I'm gonna have an error. It says no default constructor exists for class shape. So I gotta call something in the constructor. Let me just make it a pointer type because I always do that. So it's gonna be new shape. And it's gonna take two float values. So 10f and 12f, maybe. Alright, we don't care. You know, there's some weird shape that has a, um, what is it, area? Perimeter of 10 and then, you know, they both have 10, all right? No, let's, just, let's just say it like that. So it takes two values, and now we have two values, all right? Easy peasy, done. But this guy still has an issue. I can call circle. I can make a circle. Circle C equals new circle, and the constructor doesn't take anything, all right? So let's go ahead and make it take something. I'm going to take these two float values and put them right here. Okay, there we go. But there's still an issue. Now, I have to give something here. So, 10.f, 10.f, all good. Now, th there's no error here, but there are errors here. So, the way, the thing that is trying to tell us is that we are not calling the constructor here. All right? We're not calling it there. But let me just go ahead and do that. So, the way we do it is through the member initializer. So, we do shape, P, and A. And that's it. That's it. The error is gone. Everything is good. Everything is dandy. I just need to do it for everything. And we are done. Now, you could also put some values in here, like P and 0, if you want to. Um, all I'm saying is, you have to call it with some value. You could take 10 things in here, like uh, for diamond, we have longitude, we have latitude, or long lat. All right, so we have do two, two of these guys. You just use it within the class itself. But these two, you know, you take these two, you give it the shape, you know, you call the constructor of the guy on the top. Now, if this guy was inherited from something else, you know, was going to inherit itself, like it was a child of another class, it would have to also call that guy 
in that class and in, in the in the member initializer all right so this is the way you call a constructor within your you know in a, in a hierarchical sort of design all right so uh yeah this is the way you do it you do it with a member initializer give it the things you want now again you don't have to take it from a constructor you could just do 10 and 0 you know, every time you make a square it's 10 and 0 you don't have to obey any rules you just have to call it that's it all right there is one more thing i want to talk about you, you could skip this part it's not that important but nah, it's good to know and that is my friends raii again with this awesome dude so i'm gonna go ahead and do stitzy out shape was made and let's do a backslash n never do backslash n always do end l always and we have this guy right here shape was destroyed all right now i'm not going to go ahead and do it with everything i'm just going to go ahead and do it with let's say square so i'm going to have a square right here and, it's, and another right here so square square was made square was well, let's say delete it, not destroyed, because you know it makes more sense. All right, so let's go ahead and create a square. Square sq, or either square pointer, because I want to be able to delete it. Not, you know, I don't want it to automatically get deleted once we get out of the scope, because when we get out of the scope right here, we're going to actually go out of the program. So let's go to new square, let's say 10 and 10, something like that, all good and dandy. And um, I'm going to go ahead and delete sq. So let's go ahead and see exactly how it works. Now, if you would be so kind to compile. All right, there we go. So as you can see, shape was made, square was made, square was deleted, shape was deleted. So the square class, which is a child of the shape class, is kind of, um, you know, it goes in the belly of that guy. All right, so if I was to add something right here you could see that it kind of has a scope alright so first shape gets made then square then square gets deleted then shape is deleted alright so this is the way RAI works with uh, with with uh, what, what is it called with with the inheritance structures and it's just goddamn beautiful okay guys uh, I think that's been it there's no more things on my list yep all has been talked about all good and dandy um, if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments. I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, do leave a like. And I uh, would really appreciate you subscribing and hitting that red button right there. Alright, uh, thank you for watching, guys. I will see you when I see you.